You're listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Time, energy, and resources. Today I speak with Mark Mitry about Humans 2.0 and what it means to be an upgraded human. Well, good morning. I'm here with Mark Metry. How are you? Doing fantastic, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm really happy to have you on the show. And uh, I wanted you to have a chance to introduce yourself to people as far as what you do. So if you would like to take some time to do that, feel free. Cool. So uh, I, I mostly spend my time here on planet Earth uh, using my fingers to press buttons. And I also talk to a lot of people and sometimes I just talk to myself and I record it via a microphone and that's really what 95% of my time consists of but uh, I, I'm running a, uh, a business right now called VDream and it's a virtual and augmented reality growth agency and I also host this podcast called Humans 2.0 that's all about upgrading to the next level with all sorts of different CEOs, entrepreneurs, authors, people doing really cool stuff in the world. Yeah, that's that's it's very cool. The uh, oh, I looked into the uh, is it is it pronounced VU Dream or View Dream? View Dream, like as if like you're view. viewing something. Absolutely, and I think as part of that, you had said that you don't uh, you don't really have a line between work and play, and it it sounds like that with the way you describe this stuff. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like that, that philosophy definitely has its roots throughout my entire life. But you know, I don't necessarily think of work and play to be separate. The only distinction that I would say is, um, you know, going into states of uh, deep rest and uh, deep play where I'm not on my phone or not doing anything like that. But for the most part, you know, I just exist, and <laughs> whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of people equate working with communicating and involving others, you know, and that's not always the case. So I can see how your brain might make a distinction between I'm playing and having a good time, but I'm using my phone or my microphone. And now I'm playing and having a good time, but I'm not. So it's sort of more play and it's less work. Yeah, like I, uh, you know, the things that, that I consider work are the things that I don't like doing so to speak and you know whenever when I first started this business and you know somebody would ask me the question am I working it it, it would feel weird it would feel different mm-hmm. it didn't feel like working but you know as as the business grows and whatnot there are some things that I'm not good at there are some things that I'm bad at and I have other people on my team take care of those so I just focus on you know, really the highest rewarding tasks first and the things that I like doing and I'm good at. And it, that doesn't seem like work whatsoever. Well, right. And that's the way it's supposed to work in a, in a fairly perfect world. Right. And I think people's <laughs> definition of work is that and sometimes they don't, they're not actually aware of the fact that that's what their definition is. So they spend all their time avoiding it and they don't like, they don't turn it into that thing that they want to do. They go, well, I got to go to work now. Okay. Or this is too worky. I don't want to do it. It feels too much like work. And so I think for a lot of people, their work can become the way that you described it. Mm. Yeah, for sure. But you know, like people, people get down different paths and you know, the people around them start influencing their life and they start shaping these definitions and, um, you know, their mindset. And then that takes, you know, a toll on their life and, and what they do uh, right now and, and in the future, just like you said. Yeah, I did a, I did a podcast and an article called um, Job career or calling in which I sort of described the differences Mm -hmm. between that and how a lot of people get caught up in going, well, I want to pursue my dreams and do my calling kind of thing. But for some people, it doesn't work that way. For some people, they just do have a job or a career and it's the job or the career that fuels the resources to allow them to pursue Mm -hmm. that calling that they want to do. And, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily have to say, look, you know, I really love butterflies, so I have to be like the highest paid butterfly capturer in the world. You could go do something else at your conveyor belt or what have you, and then still have that time. And I have found with talking to a lot of people that there are some people who work a decent, solid, really well-paying job, but to them, that's all that is so that they can then go and take their four weeks of vacation and go mm-hmm. help children in Africa and things like that. And, you know, I think it varies from person to person. So I've learned not to judge people based on on that. I, I'm kind of of the other kind where I do want to pursue something that 
I forget people will pay me for, <laughs> you know, because it's like you would, you would do it anyway. And this is one of those things is talking to people like you that I just, I think it's so fascinating. It's so interesting and exciting. And I'm just obsessed with, with how people spend their time, energy and resources. Cause I figure I always have something to learn. Hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good series of points. Um, you know, just like you said, it's super dependent on the person. And I know a lot of people that go to their nine to five and they don't even mind it. They don't necessarily like totally love it, like embrace every moment of it, but they understand, you know, <laughs> it, it's what they need to pay the bills and they're fine with that. And then after work, you know, they spend time with their family, they do whatever and they live a happy life. You know, is there, is that dependent on the person or is that just based on the perspective that they have at that time? And maybe it's going to shift later on. I don't know, right. but um, you, you know, it, there's different balances for, for each person. Like the first, the first and probably only traditional job that I had was, uh, sweeping floors. And, uh, you know, I hated it not because of the actual sweeping of the floors, but just <laughs> somebody else telling me what to do. But it was that job that allowed me to get enough money to, you know, buy an iPhone and then introduced me to the, the internet world where I had much more freedom uh, and, and capacity to do what I wanted to do. So I, I, there's definitely balances to it. And I'm glad you, you brought up that distinction. Yeah, I think that's an excellent observation that that it's an awareness that you may or may not. Uh, it, it's more an awareness than a fact. It's sort of like a created perspective that we have about that sort of thing. So that's that's an excellent observation. And I'm sure you, you've you made a lot of observations like that and probably gained a lot of perspective with all the really interesting people you've talked to on your on your podcast, your Humans 2.0. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really good point, man. I was, just, I was just talking to one of my friends about that. And it's like, I'm learning so much through, you know, all the years of experience of my own and the guests that I bring on and their years of experience that it, it's just like, I'm learning so much. I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> so like, there's like this constant paradigm shifting and that's what I really think learning is all about. Like, you know, dismantling the, the foundation of, of what you thought was true and really taking yourself to uh, to the next level, and uh, you know it, it, that's a concept that I've been playing around with. And um, you know, oftentimes we'll follow this path in life, and like we'll move and we'll move, and you know things will be incremental. But you know, something that I'm coming to the realization of, you know, every every next level of my life is gonna require a next level me in different facets like a different mindset a, a next level body a next level you know relationship a next level communication network and talking to all of these crazy people on my podcast not crazy you know but like just <laughs> very informational talking to all it. these awesome people yeah talking to all these awesome people on my podcast always shifts that around and gets like ideas moving in my head and Sometimes like I'll figure out like huge things about my life, like during a podcast, sometimes right. it'll be after, sometimes it'll be like a month after. And then like things will just start connecting when I'm like walking down the street, I'm like, oh, that's what it was. And then like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's quite the experience. Let's just say that. Yeah. I think what you're describing this, this sort of much more natural learning uh, mm. that people have versus, you know, just sort of reading something and saying, okay, but this way you have like a natural learning in which you um, absorb something much on a much deeper level. Because like you said, two weeks later, you're like, oh, oh, okay, I get that now. Or, oh, I see how that applies to me. You know, and, and the same thing happened to me multiple times on the, the really amazingly interesting people that I have um that I've interviewed recently, you know, the, the gentleman with the heart and lung transplant and uh, just some of the things that he said that, that I thought I had never even thought about how, you know, his, his um, hospital room was like a prison to him because the equipment wouldn't function outside of that room. So here, this stuff is keeping him alive, but to him, he feels like he's in prison and it's, and when he got home, you know, he was actually starting to get healthier and he literally ran four marathons after this, but it wasn't the health, it was the emotion, the, his emotional state hadn't shifted yet. So he was still kind of trapped in his own brain for a while. And just stuff like that, 
makes me think of how we get trapped in our own brains. You know, we're perfectly fine. Everything's fine. The sun's out, but you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in a weird state. And then you realize that's normal. And, and that's sort of a healthy resilience of people's emotions and so forth. That's a, that's a great story. And I, I think the main thing is really our limiting perspectives. I think that as humans, our perspectives are always late to the game. And I think it's old perspectives in our new, always changing environments that really gives us fear and, uh, you know, all sorts of things that we might not understand and, and think are bad. Um, you know, so like, you, you know, you've, you've never been through something like that guy, but now you have this different perspective. So when something relatively, you know, correlated happens in your own life, you now have that new perspective that that guy had to go through hell to discover. And I, you know, that that's what communication and a podcast and using technology, you know, it allows us to expedite that in a way that's never been possible before in human history. Exactly. In a way, it's almost related to sort of virtual reality in which we're putting ourselves mm. in a place we could never have put before. And granted, you know, this is, you know, the written words never going to go away, regardless of what people say. But I think that's a way that people continue to put themselves into a perspective that they they can't really achieve in life or they hadn't even considered. And that's why it's it's fascinating to talk to people. And I think above and beyond any form of, of media and recording is having an actual conversation with a human being because just so much comes out. Yeah, man, absolutely. And, you know, if you know him, the director Chris Milk said that uh, virtual reality is the ultimate empathy machine. Um, you know, it's one thing to read something, it's one thing to watch a video. But when you actually get to experience something in somebody's footsteps, that's when the game changes. You know, there's that quote that says, out of sight means out of mind. And there's a lot of people out there that aren't in such great situations and have amazing opportunity like we do right now. And I think using empathy mediated by virtual reality and, and you know other communication methods i think that's going to really change the world and i don't even think we we really understand what the capabilities are going to be let alone imagine uh what the future is going to look like oh absolutely and i think that's our biggest failing sometimes is that um we we don't know what we don't know <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and we don't know it until, until we don't know it. So, you know, like I, uh, I think one of the few quotes Einstein said that is an actual Einstein quote because people love to say Einstein said something that he didn't. But mm. I think one of the things was, you know, the more you learn, the more you know uh, that what you don't know. And I think I just paraphrased that terribly, but it's <laughs> the same concept is that. And I think I, I see kind of a common theme with the things that you've done where you're sort of about experience and about empathy. I mean, with your Humans 2.0, you're talking to all these people and you're gaining all this knowledge and wisdom and and, and 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 perspective. And then with your, you know, your view dream, it's the same kind of thing where you're like allowing people to see perspectives that they normally wouldn't have. And I think that's awesome. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. I'm uh, trying my best. And, uh, you know, I love that quote by Einstein for sure. Um, and, uh, and yeah, man, like to, to me, the, the main quote that keeps me going, like, I, I really don't even understand what I'm doing to a degree, but, uh, you know, one quote, I think it's from Steve jobs. He says that you can't connect the dots looking forward. It's like, you can't say, you know, this is related to that and everything makes perfect sense. Like. If you talked to me like six months ago, I'd be much more confused about things that already have happened. But, you know, looking back at them now, then I'm able to understand and, you know, maybe make a more uh, completed thought like like what you just said about the humans 2.0 and uh, what I'm doing with Feed Dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really cool when, when sort of things reveal themselves to you versus you saying, well, I got, yeah. I'm in control the whole time. Oh, yeah, we're going to go this way. And then you kind of take a step back and finally kind of you know, it, it, you do that thing that we keep calling mindfulness, that people throw mm. that word around, but most people don't know what it means. And it's, you know, it's just this ability to kind of be in the moment and go, wait, what's going on here? You know, what am I doing? I don't need to get up and get another cup of coffee. Maybe I should take a breath and yeah. go, what am I, you know, what what am I seeing here? And I bet you have lots of moments like that, like I do too, with, with the people that I talk to and that I just think, wow, you know, 
for me, it's really an amazing thing when I have a discussion with somebody and they kind of validate a previous podcast or something because the mm. interviews are a small portion of some of the other things I'm doing with all my articles, which came from the coaching, which came from the other stuff and the time, energy and resources stuff. And it's really cool to have a theory about something and someone says, yeah, I did that thing. And you go, wow, that's exactly what I was talking about. You thank you for sort of explaining in a better language what mm. I figured was going on. So I think it's just such a cool learning experience. And um, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Humans 2.0 is sort of a, like upgraded humans, I think you suggested. So what what makes them upgraded? It's a very good question, my friend. So the main distinction, you know, I, Humans 2.0 kind of started out with with my own life journey because it showed me what the uh, what the difference is. And to me, what a human 1.0, so to speak, is <laughs> is somebody that is just they're they're walking through life they're not aware of what's going on they're blaming this and that on you know their parents the environment the government whatever and they're not taking any responsibility whatsoever and you know they spend their time mindlessly scrolling through instagram i'm not saying that instagram is a bad thing i'm just saying that no right you know using technology not mindfully and letting it use you is not a good thing and you know spending time with people that aren't the best for you and talking about you know dumb mundane things like you know dude did you see kim kardashian like walk out from this limo to this hotel dude oh my god bro and uh that to me is what a human 1.0 is and i think the first step in becoming a human 2.0 is you know conscious awareness uh there's definitely a scale to that and uh, it's a dance you know throughout life but i think the main main thing is really taking responsibility for your life um and and that means taking responsibility for all of the good things and all of the bad things in life and you know the way that i saw this unfold in front of my eyes and it's what really got me changing was you know my my sophomore year in college um that's when i really had like a like a quantum shift <laughs> so to speak i mm-hmm. like it became aware of all sorts of different things and i started doing you know all the good things like eating healthy exercising meditating journaling expressing gratitude communicating authentically you know doing all those kinds of things and um i, I bought a whiteboard uh, when I was first starting it and I started to like write down what my goals are, you know, all that stereotypical, you know, mm-hmm. life transformation stuff. And I had a roommate at the time and uh, I had the whiteboard up and he came from class. It was like at night and, uh, he brought in my other roommate and he was like, dude, look what, look what Mark bought. And he's like, you know, he said something along the lines of, oh, that's so gay. That's stupid, whatever. And like a month later I had it end up starting my company. So I was like really in like mad hustle mode and I was totally changing who I was as a person. And like a month later down the road, that same roommate, he started seeing what I was doing and he started shifting himself. He start, he went from this kid that like always partied all the time and not caring about things to really tripling down on what he thought was important at the time, which was school, getting all A's and then transferring out of the college into a better school. It's like that really showed me what the power of not only just changing yourself, but what it also does for the people around you. So that to me is what being a human 2.0 is all about. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. It's um, it's sort of a a much more deeper version of the Eleanor Roosevelt court that quote, the whole great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events and small minds discuss people. So you're Mm -hmm. saying, you know, people go from one of those levels to the next level where they're they're just reacting to, to, to um, trash TV and things like that versus going, okay, that's great, but what are you going to do and how does that affect you and, and so forth? And that's a good story about how you just do stuff and people around you start being affected by it. It's, it's even, 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 I can even use the example of me going to the same cafe over and over again to write and people get that I'm writing and people stop and talk to me and, and it's a different vibe than just going there for a cup of coffee and talking really loud to somebody. You know, it's 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 really a, it's really interesting. You know, people talk about your vibe and they talk about 
how you affect others and all that good stuff. And some of it sounds kind of foo-foo, but, but, but there is a real solid reality to how the way that you, you know, the way that you behave uh, and the way that you are accepting of other people around you in a certain way, you do, you do make a difference. Like you made a difference on, on your roommates. You know, that's, you know, it's the same kind of concept. I mean, you could just have fallen back into the peer pressure, if you will, of going, yeah, you're right. This is dumb. So, Hey, where's, you know, let's go get a beer kind of thing, but you didn't. And that kind of perseverance makes a difference. And that also translates into parenting because you, you can tell your kids whatever you want, but they're not going to yeah. listen to, to what you say. They're going to, they're going to do what you do, you know? Mm. So it, yeah, it, it's, it, it's the same, same kind of thing. They truly will do. They'll pick up your bad habits. They'll pick up your good habits. And the day that you see your daughter do something and you're like, Oh my God, I do that how annoying you know you realize that <laughs> that they picked up on on what you what you do and it's a really proud moment when they pick up on the positive things and when you when your son graduates college and he applied himself and all that stuff so it's a pretty cool thing i love it and uh you know thinking through that logic kind of led me down the the gateway of you know hey if i did like these small things that aren't really that significant and it had this impact on this person you know what what happens if uh you know i can record myself having awesome conversations with people upload it on the internet make a podcast out of it so everyone else that has a desire to learn about it can also do so with you know despite the geographic location that we were born in or the people around them yeah, the, the benefit of the internet is is pretty amazing. It's 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 funny how long it's been around, but people still don't get the fact that it's like you have your own Stargate because you know time and distance doesn't matter. You know, you know it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You reach so many people uh, in different places and different different portions of life and so forth. In that, you would never be able to reach these people. And the ability to have your own broadcast station too, in a way, is just amazing. And it's just it's too bad that people forget that when they when they post fairly negative comments and things like that when they when they have a, a bad day and they're just sitting in front of their screen because they just think it's them in front of their screen in their cubicle but it's sort of them in the world you know so you can do just as much good as you can do the damage so hopefully people can learn to do a bit more good exactly and it's it, it gives me a lot of hope to to hear that uh joe rogan's podcast huh? has uh, has more listeners than cnn has yes. more reach than cnn you know, so so that should just go to that should just uh, uh, you know show you what the, what the potential is, and uh, you know if I can share something else, when I started my podcast, I started it uh, last year um, at, at towards the end of the summer, really, and I didn't take it seriously. I'd like upload an episode maybe every once in a while, and I was thinking like, man, you know why. Yeah, I really wanted to start the podcast, but I was like, man, nobody's going to listen to this. Who am I? I'm just like this kid. I don't know what I'm talking about. And even though I had other guests on that did know what they were talking about, I, I was very doubtful and I just never think that it'd go anywhere. And then at the beginning of this year, January, I started to take it really seriously. I was like, all right, I'm going to upload an episode Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then uh, that's really when people started listening to it. And uh, I got all sorts of Instagram DMs, you know, messages on LinkedIn. And people were saying things like, hey, Mark, you should start talking more. You know, you should bring out like a solo series of the podcast. And that's what I did. And basically, the reason why I'm saying this is like a few months or yeah, a few months of just doing that. Um, Humans 2.0 started ranking pretty high in the uh, the iTunes charts and you know more people have listened to the podcast uh, you know last week than at all of the other times combined wow. and and I and like apps and like I'm just somebody and I just consistently put in the work and you know I was thinking do yeah Joe Rogan um, Aubrey Marcus, all these awesome people with podcasts, hundreds of thousands of people listen to them, if not millions, why would anybody listen to mine? But I just put one step forward and, you know, not now the podcast is where it is. And, yeah. uh, you know, you, you could definitely take that on your own mark and, uh, it just, uh, just one step forward. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's, 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 uh, it's a description of the, uh, you know, 
10 years to be an overnight success, <laughs> you know, where people yeah. forget that, that people, all these people, they think we're just like, you know, nobody yesterday and here they are or, or whatever. Wow. You really did a lot. You know, that's really great. You got so lucky. Well, yeah, no, it wasn't lucky. You know, it was all the effort, the consistent and not giving up and you know and that you're a normal human being and you have doubts and it's okay and you just don't beat yourself up and you just keep going so and you kind of adjust and you use kind of a scientific method like you did to go well this seems to work better people seem to want this i'll do this one exactly and there's like that quote it's um the harder i work the luckier i get yep and you it's, know it's just like the more input you put in the world the more chances you have for output you know that's what i think what luck is Right, exactly. You put you you can't you can't see what'll happen if you don't do the thing to make it happen. Yeah. So exactly. Uh, I like I like the um, the adjustments you've made, and I like that you uh, focused on on people too, and that you have this theme of the the two because it's really kind of a cool thing. I mean, a lot of people are talking about you know various various i guess various versions of of what you call an upgrade but they're not really focused the way that you are and i think that's that's really cool and your ability to talk to people and and, and have some guests that can really sit back and kind of define that is is i think a really valuable thing and it's just nice that somebody can you know flip open their their iphone and just and listen to that sort of thing that's the same thing that i appreciate and listen is talking to people too is that i can kind of bring that world to them as well and hopefully i'm asking some good questions that they would ask yeah man i love it it's uh i wrote this article and i was basically talking about like the ability to use podcasts on your phone like while you're walking around it's it's really one of the first steps to curating your own reality so like no matter you know there's obviously all sorts of different factors but you know no matter how bad the the ghetto neighborhood that you're in no matter how bad the people around you are you can still pop in headphones walk around or, or, or stay in your room or whatever and really surround yourself with the world's greatest teachers i'm not saying i'm the world's greatest teachers but um you know a lot of awesome people out there have podcasts and in my opinion a lot of those people are really the ones that that you should be listening to Right, right. And and the teaching isn't just, okay, here's how to do this. It's more of, I'm going to talk to this person who experienced something. And then you learn from that. And I've learned quite a bit from the, the, the people that I've talked to recently. I mean, I mean, as a gentleman who, who uh, was a p- pianist since th- three years old and, and had to mm-hmm. deal with suicide. You know, he had, you know, here's somebody that you think is really accomplished and you realize, well, it doesn't work that way. It's not that people think I want to think about killing myself because I'm just bad there's lots of reasons for that you know some of the most famous stars out there that that we think are actually gorgeous looked in the mirror and thought they were like hideous you know it's 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 that whole mental perspective and it's just so nice that somebody can relate to somebody that you've talked to or something that you say and say oh yeah that's me too i'm not alone you know Mm. it kind of goes back to you putting the headphones on not only are they learning but they're not alone because they can actually relate to something someone else said and if you can give them some inspiration like you did with your you know like you did with your your whiteboard you you kind of it's sort of an audio inspiration to say hey i did this thing or let's talk about this it's nice that people can say okay i listened to the podcast i'm not going to go back and repeat the same thing that's not working i'm going to go and just i'm going to go take a walk in a park or something and just clear my head which which sets off all these other events that just never would have happened (laughs) That's a really good point, man. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's uh, it's the same kind of thing for the whole um, the secret and the you know like think positive kind of thing. I wrote almost a tongue in cheek episode and podcast on just think positive, not you know that was my that was my <laughs> thing was that you know it, it, thinking positive and having something positive happen is a view into a reality, but it's not the reality. The reality is because you thought positive thoughts, you did something different. And because you did something different, these other chain events started to happen. And you could say, well, sure, just because I was happy that happened. Well, if you weren't happy, you wouldn't have left your house that day. And because you left your house, you met that person and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a physics to what happens. It just Mm. feels like think happy thoughts, but I just don't want people to get trapped into thinking, just be positive and everything's peachy. Well, life isn't really like that, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I I definitely think it's part of it. It's, it's not the, 
you know, just like in life, there's nothing, there's nothing that there's, there's never only one thing that you need to focus on. It's always a, you know, like a compilation of everything combining with a bunch of paradoxical thoughts. Like, yeah, think positive, but you're not always going to be thinking positive. And sometimes it is a good thing to not think positive. Sometimes at times it is a good thing to feel upset and unhappy because then that can lead you to the positive thoughts and, and real happiness. That's exactly and, uh, right. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I'm right on with you. Yeah. It's, that's exactly right. In fact, the gentleman, uh, you know, that we had a, a good deep discussion about suicide with, he was telling me how, you know, we, I, there really aren't any bad emotions because they all have a purpose. And I've, I've thought that for a long time. I mean, you know, you, you can't just quell your anger or, you know, if you're paranoid, there's a reason. If, you, if you're angry, good. You know, you can use your anger to break past something you weren't able to do before. You know, you, you know, even the I'll show you, that's, that's not really a bad thing because sometimes people need a kick in the butt and fear is a great kick in the butt. You know, you shouldn't keep falling back into it. But, you know, some really negative emotions or emotions we think are negative aren't they're there for a reason and you just have to manage them and go, okay, why am I feeling this way? All right, I'm mad and I'm going to make this not happen anymore in a really good way. So I think there's a lot more constructive tools we have than we think we do because we, if we just focus on, well, as long as I'm happy, everything's fine. I, I think you're limiting yourself. Not saying you should go out and be angry and have some road rage or anything, but you know, I, I just, I just think those are very useful to us as human beings. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think, uh, you know, the main thing that, that really stands with all this is, uh, you know, what's, what's your intent and, and what are you trying to actually make happen? So like some people have an issue with this. Some people don't have an issue with this. So it's really, I think it's about being introspective and really being alone, uh, you know, the whole mindfulness thing and really asking yourself, um, you know, what do I, what, what should I be focused on? And oftentimes if you can kind of get away from the world and not seek out distraction in this 2018 uh, world, which is very hard to do, your, your mind will kind of like tell you what to do. Like, you know, like in, in some crevices of your mind, oh, uh, you know, they're like, there's that thing that I should probably start working on. Or like, there's like this macro theme in my life that I continuously, uh, you know, keep seeing where, uh, you know, every Monday I, uh, you know, after work, I'm super stressed out. I, I hit up the McDonald's uh, drive through. It's just about thinking about little things like that and, and, and loving yourself to the point where you're not afraid of, uh, of making mistakes. And, you know, to me, like you can, you can think about things, you know, I know a lot, a lot of people that I consider very intelligent, very smart, but they don't end up accomplishing anything in their life because they just focus in on the thinking part. Like they think it's a sign of intelligence to continuously think about doing something and then, you know, out, you know, talking themselves out of doing it. And that's what they think makes them smart. If that makes any sense. Mm, it does. It does. It's sort of like getting way too far into your own head and saying, well, this is mm -hmm. what'll work versus being open to what'll work and kind of being more you know, and I hate to go back to mindfulness, but it's more of like experiencing it. And, you know, and they say that, you know, uh, failure equals pain and pain equals experience and experience equals wisdom, you know, so it's like, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to eventually get that wisdom and because all the knowledge in the world's not going to happen unless you go try it because it just, it, it's a very personal thing. And what works for one person may not work mm -hmm. for another. Like, and it, for example, I, I, I enjoy public speaking, you know, giant audience, the bigger, the better. I don't really care. Um, I just, I get really jazzed by that. And there are people who think I'm crazy. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't like public speaking. And, and I think it ranks as one of the, their number one fears, you know, I say, mm -hmm. is that, that right by right above like dental failure or something like that. So, um, but it's, it's you know, to each his own yeah, and they have to kind of, yeah, that's a scary, that's a two scary words that don't belong together. And, um, it's, it's just the way that works. So so instead of me babbling about myself, I should really be more uh, apt to you. And I should ask you a question about <laughs> um, um, time, energy, and resources. Because I believe that that everything we do is made up of that, one or more of those things. And sometimes we get energy. Sometimes we give it. Uh, we're mm -hmm. always spending time. So when you were in the years with the white beats before the whiteboard and stuff, I'm assuming your perception of how you handled time is different than the way you handled it now. Is that a correct statement? Way different. 
Okay. Way different. Can, was, you, can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, like in, in terms of uh, just so I know like my, my perception. Yeah, or, yeah, just like like or, or even like how you manage time in your life because like, you know, college life and, and non-college life and, and when you're younger versus a little older or when you're involved in projects, it can be a very different feeling. So if you can just describe like the difference, like if you can think of yourself as a separate person, like how did that ha- person – handle time versus how you handle it now? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, uh, you know, I think about this all the time and, um, you know, really before like that, that whole whiteboard thing, so to speak, you know, there were obviously events leading down that, but, uh, I was a totally different person. Um, not just from, you know, if somebody saw me, I, I, I did look totally different, but I was different from the outside perspective. And then just internally, my perspective on the inside is now totally, totally different. Um, and, uh, and really the main way that I would answer your question is by saying, you know, you know, when I was younger, I had some, I had all sorts of issues, you know, thankfully like my, you know, my parents didn't abuse me or anything like that, but I had all sorts of uh, internal issues that really made for a lot of confusion, anxiety, depression, and that's totally correlated with time. Like anything that I try to do, my mind would tell me, it would always tell me the opposite of what I wanted to hear really. Like Like my mind was just totally against me. Um, you know, I try to do something, I, it would say, dude, you suck at this. Like you're doing, you're, you're too slow. You can't do this. Um, things like that. And in turn, I didn't really end up, uh, accomplishing too much. I definitely accomplished some things that, that kind of surprised me today, but overall, like my, my efficiency and my flow, so to speak with time was, was really bad. And how that shifted to now is uh, maybe the best way I can describe it is by saying, you know, everything before that whiteboard moment was was clunky, was difficult, was hard. But, you know, after I started to sort myself out and I've been on this journey for about uh, a year and six months, seven months now, I just like show up and things happen. Like my, to say the least, I don't really know how to describe it, but my relationship with time has, uh, has greatly changed. I obviously, I have future goals for, for business and, and, and different, uh, plans and, and different metrics that I want to reach, but really it's transformed into, I'm living right now in the present moment, which I close to really never did before the whiteboard, so to speak. I was always in my head abstractually thinking about what had happened and what I was nervous about that was coming. Um, it, it really changed to, you know, I'm living in the moment right now. And then my past, as in like yesterday, means to me like this collective experience of of, of really like my learning experience and, and it really gives me the context for life. And then the future is what I'm going to accomplish, you know, the compelling picture, so to speak, in my head that, uh, that I'm striving towards. But, you know, there's a balance of that between, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the, the clouds and dirt analogy, um, you know, to get to the clouds, to get to that high level, you need to really focus in on the dirt and uh, enjoy the process of the dirt road. Because if you focus on, you know, the clouds too much, you're just going to be in your own head. But it's like a balance of using your present moment time, um, along with thinking of a compelling future and keeping in context of what has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. And um, you mentioned the sort of you asking your brain something and it kept saying no and like no you're not good enough mm. and all that stuff can you can you if i if i may ask can you talk a little bit about the the self doubt and how how that felt and how you kind of got through that like how did you how did you what was your turning point for you know what what did you how did you finally tell it to just like shut up and go no 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm okay yeah that's a, that's a really good point so um so yeah, so I should probably preface it with this. Um, so I was, uh, I think I was a pretty smart kid. Like my parents told me in, in kindergarten, 
that like they gave me like a series of tests and I was one of the highest scoring ones. And then I remember in first and second grade, I won like student of the month, like six times in a row. I ended up winning like this art competition and like I ended up going on TV. I was always like the first person to like finish uh, like a, a math quiz first. And I had like always gotten them right. And then um, and, and, like I loved life. I had all sorts of friends. I was selling baseball cards. Like I was just doing all those great things. And then, um, you know, in the third grade, we ended up moving, switching schools. And looking back at that now, that's where I really learned the, the impermanence of life. And I learned that, you know, really everything, every, this is going to sound really bad, but everything around us is going to die one day. And that was my, my first experience of that. And I was shook by it. And when I went to my new school, um, I didn't, I didn't really make friends. And instead of going out there and doing the things that I would at my original school, I was, became addicted to the, the thought pattern of, um, you know, nobody knows who you are. You're just a shy kid, all that. So basically from third grade to man, really say 11th grade, 12th grade, like all the way in the high school, I was, I built this prison inside of my mind where I didn't really have any meaningful friends. I didn't really do much with my life. Um, so, so I was just kind of stuck in that prison. Um, but, but the one thing that I did have is I ended up starting this business when I was 15 years old and it, it you know, to keep the story, the story short, that went on to be a, a wildly successful business, like multi six figures at that time. Like I had no idea what I was doing. It was really just pure luck and chance that it happened. So I had that part of my life and I had always known like, you know, in second grade, I was selling and uh, collecting baseball and Pokemon cards. Uh, I was always trying to hustle. I was always trying to make things happen, you know, on the business entrepreneurial side. And when I went to college, um, the mindset there was, hey, you're going to college to um, get a nine to five job, to, to go through like these courses that may be obsolete. And we all know they're kind of BS but it's to get you to that end job. And, you know, whether it was my subconscious, my soul, like the, the part in me that already understands the past, present, and future, there was just this part in me that was like desperately, desperately trying to like burn a hole through my chest and climb out. Like I, I had my freshman year, I really had like this unending burning anxiety and I fell into this state of depression where basically I, uh, I ended up gaining, you know, it wasn't for me, I didn't gain the freshman 15, I gained the freshman 50. So I abused food, I abused caffeine, I abused sugar, I abused sleep, I abused all sorts of different things. And I really just like dug myself down this, this, uh, th this spiral. And, um, you know, at that time I didn't know what was happening, but, uh, but yeah, so like after that, I ended up leaving for the summer. I went back to my parents' house. That was kind of uh, a break for everything. And I ended up going to, uh, to Egypt, which is where my parents are originally from. And that's where they came to America in 1995. And I went there for about a month and that trip really gave me a lot of perspective. And, um, really the main way I got out of it was, you know, that summer I just spent my time learning about all sorts of different things by really just, you know, I got sick and tired of, of being sick and tired. And, you know, it was just a series of, of, of me following, you know, what had happened in my past with what I really knew deep down what I was capable of. And it wasn't a nine to five job. And then, my, uh, my sophomore year came into school and, you know, there was like, there's just this moment where I came back from class and I was really just, you know, I, I had gone through the summer. I wasn't depressed and anxious that much, but I still was. And I was really like, I need to do something right now because if I don't do something right now, like literally in this moment, I'm going to say, you know, later, 
uh, you know, I, I don't care. I don't want to do that thing. Um, and really just make excuses for it. And then what that's going to result to is leaving a life filled with regret. And that's not a good situation for me, for sure. So I, I got up in that moment. And, uh, you know, I, I really, I remember I, I came back from class and I was just literally just chilling on my bed. I think I just woke up from a nap and I was just, I, I wasn't feeling in a, in a good state. So I was like, I just need to get up and do something right now. So I just got up, I walked to target, I bought a whiteboard and like during that half an hour, 45 minute walk, I was like now looking back at it and like having talked to like all these psychotherapists my like subconscious was like communicating with my conscious and like through that walk i was like crying and like figuring out all these things in my life and like why they happened and like what i needed to do right now and uh and you know after that whiteboard i wrote down like what my but like my one year goal is what my you know five year goal you know and like what I want to do for my future. I had like some quotes from Steve Jobs. I had like this uh, this st- this three step formula that I had uh, read somewhere, and it was uh, take responsibility, take action, find a way. And then a month later, I ended up starting my business. Um, and then that really led to the whole shift of me eating healthy. Oh oh, before I, I totally skipped out on this part, but um. Really, the main thing that led me to start that journey, that's to start that cosmic shift in October, was uh, I ended up uh, discovering this diet called Bulletproof. Yes. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it. And I, uh, I basically ended, I ended up starting this, drinking this coffee that has uh, butter right. and uh, uh, an MCT oil in it, which is like this form of coconut oil. And uh, really, before that in my life, my whole diet was just like heavy, refined, processed carbohydrates. I had no idea. Like really, I had no idea there was a correlation between my mood, my energy, and the food that I was eating. After I started drinking that coffee, I started doing the diet, which is basically like eat a lot of vegetables and then eat a lot of healthy fats like eggs, bacon, butter, steak, avocados, nuts, uh, seeds, some oils, things like that. And then like that led to this huge cosmic shift and my physical shift in my body. I lost all of the weight that I had gained the last year in like a month. My brain felt like it turned like it turned on for the first time. I was able to start making these connections that I had never been able to to do before. I I stopped being tired. Like I remember like there were these moments in the day where like I literally did not know what it felt like to be tired. I was just ready to go like 24-7 to just get up and at it. And then that's how that led to the whole whiteboard, me shifting. Um, and it, it started out with a physical shift first, but really it's all interconnected. I, I hope that answered uh, the question. And then like from there, I started to meditate and, uh, and, and you know, journaling and uh, spending time with awesome people. And yeah, that's that's really how it, how it happened. No, I, I think that's all excellent. I think that's that's all intertwined. Like you said, you know how you feel physically, the fuel you give yourself. You know, the mental is connected to physical and and emotional and all that stuff. It's really quite amazing. And I'm aware of the 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 bullet coffee and the bullet diet, and it's similar to the four hour body, uh, which is also a, a diet that's similar to that. And I hate to call them diets because diets don't really work it's more of a lifestyle yeah. because the diet has a start and an end so i exactly. i i see exactly how that would have uh, affected you and i th- it's i think it's nice you didn't have a car because if you had a car you would have gotten there in seven minutes and you wouldn't have gone through that you know maybe you did have a car but i think it's good that you had that walk because sometimes a walk can be so elevating because you have your thoughts and you you just feel better about yourself and it's just amazing how body movement is connected to a better self of, of self-esteem and a, just a better concept of self. So I think it's really neat that your brain had to get that stuff out before you got to the whiteboard. The whiteboard was sort of like that grail that you had to bring home, a treasure. But to get to the treasure, you sort of had to prove yourself to yourself. <laughs> and you had to say, no, 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 I'm good enough to go get this whiteboard and start and do my stuff. So that's, that's, that's a cool story. Yeah, thanks, man. You know, it's, it's one of those things where... You know, if you asked me that same question six months ago, I probably would have given you like a totally different answer. And like, as we talked about before, like a lot of these things start clicking in after once we have, uh, you know, new perspectives and, uh, 
and whatnot. But um, but but yeah, you know, it, to me, it was just about, you know, I, like I saw the direction of my life and where it was heading if I didn't do anything, and that pain was uh, was what really caused me to. That, that that was the catalyst. Like mm-hmm. to me, like just having a glimpse of college and seeing what the nine to five looked like, I just know that 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 would set me up for this uh, this path of failure. And you know, one of the quotes that was driving me, I think, is still totally relevant. It's if you don't sacrifice for what you want now, what you want later down the road will become the sacrifice. And mm-hmm. I had faced enough pain from high school and, uh, and my schooling before to really know what the extent of that pain was, like really what, what the extent of, uh, of the magnitude was. Um, and yeah, that's, that's led me to, to understand the whole shift between uh, heaven and hell. And, uh, you know, throughout, throughout my younger years, when I was trapped inside of my younger mind, I think that was really hell. So like, no matter what, how bad the, the external physical environment, like right now, it's still not as bad as having an internal hellscape inside of your mind that you can't escape from. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. I have, I have many thoughts on that, that I won't bore you to tears with, uh, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I certainly, agree with that because it, we're, we're here for you. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to expand on that. And speaking of, of not wasting your time, I want to make sure too, that I don't take too much of your time. Cause I did promise you that I wouldn't take more than an hour of your time. So we're getting close. So I wanted to ask you, well, first of all, I wanted to uh, uh, let you know that the, the, the mini article I write with this always has links to all of your goodies. So it'll be to your LinkedIn, to your website, to your podcast, into your uh, multitude of companies that you pl- play with. So I will definitely have that all in there. So keeping that in mind, is there anything else you want to give a shout out to or say before we close? Yeah, I think it's um, the last thing I want to say is the first time you do anything or the first time you're exposed to a new concept, it always seems weird. It always seems gimmicky. It always seems like fake, so to speak. So like when I first read about meditation, I was like, what is this crap? Like, this is just an excuse for hippies to sit around and do nothing. Like, what is this? And then the first time I did it, it seemed kind of gimmicky. Um, so like the reason why I say that is, uh, you know, you can, t- the, this podcast that you just listened to, you can take it either one of two ways. You can think and say, Hey, these are just a bunch of dudes talking, and uh, you know I'm, I'm listening to them with with headphones or, or speaker on my phone, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. These people are thousands of miles away from me. You might be listening to this six months from when this originally happened, and you can store this in your mind as a a really uh, like this boxed off concept that you just store in your mind as an excuse to not do anything, or you can take this the other way. And this is kind of what led me onto my journey. It's that take this podcast, take this message, take everything that I've said, take everything that Mark said as really a message that life is directly sending to you to wake you up. When you start thinking in terms of that and not as like this audio tape on like th- that's mediated through electronics in your ear, your entire life really begins to branch out and be powerful. So there's all sorts of people that have done amazing things in history. And, you know, for some people, that's waking up in the morning and being happy and spending time with their family. For other people, it's running a billion dollar company. Nobody knows the answer except for you. So I think that you should use this podcast as really a, a gateway to do whatever it is that you know deep down you want to do and that you need to do on this planet. That's a good shout out. Well, well said. Well, well said. Cool. Well, thank you for all of that. Thank you for spending your very valuable time with me and, and everyone here. And I just want to uh, tell you how much I appreciate you doing that. Anytime, my friend. This is awesome. Cool. We will, we will chat again, I am sure. Hey, it's Mark. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you found something tangible in there. If you're not subscribed, it's a really easy thing to do so you don't miss these. Check out Alchemy for Life on Instagram. And if you enjoyed this, I would love it if you'd give it a rating. And I will see you next time.